Let's see, and this goes to here. And hey, children at home, you just caught me. It is uh, Halloween day. Monday, October 31st, and let's see, you have homework. It is officially due tomorrow at 8 a.m. So the way it'll work is, oh, sorry, I'm back. As long as it is turned in, you are good to go. If not, and it's not finished by 8 a.m. tomorrow, it does cost you the three B points. You don't have to stand until Wednesday. So if you're trying to plan that out. But we get to go to the library on Thursday this week. And it may be our first chance to go up to the loft. Because we should be over there for a good chunk of time on Thursday. Now the drawback is they also have a game that we're playing in there. And so you're going to have to make the choice between going to the loft to read Outsiders or staying down there for the game. In order to go to the loft, you have to have over 25 B points. And you cannot have lost any B points over the week. So keep that part in mind. But as long as you've done both of those, then you get a chance to go up to the lofty area from there. Homeworky wise, um, get it done before 8 a.m. tomorrow. As long as it's done by class period, I don't have to yell at you too much. And then, let's see, from there, quizzes are graded and up on there. And if you did the homework this weekend, it is graded and already uplisted on here. So it is already on Skyward if it was done. And we're going to talk about the first charger challenge in just a moment. Questions from there? Yay. Let me get to a thing. Hang on, I have to pause. Want to be hired? I don't like any of you enough yet. Wow, uh, that's going to confuse the kids at home. We just came back to that. So speaking of, I'll put it up there one more time. The process has already begun. I spent several hours last night getting the whole thing uh, set up and built. And I have to finish it right after school today. If you are coming by, you cannot get the full-size candy bars until it gets dark. Prior to that, I just have blow pumps. And so I went out and bought like 200 blow pops, and that is my small candy for people who show up. So if you're like the little kids or you freak out and can't go through it, you get a blow pop. And then once it gets dark enough where we get to activate the fun things, uh, then the that's machine. where you can have a chance to start going. And we will go until we run out of people coming through. And then at, when you, if you come at the very end, you may go through it and get no candy if we run out, but we'll see what happens. It depends on how scary we can make this. Whenever! Would you still be teaching when we're in high school? I'm hoping, unless you have ideas that I don't. Unless he dies. How long are you going to teach for? Um, at least five more minutes. Bryce Lee! Uh, how long will it take you to go through it? I mean, I don't know, a minute, two minutes? If you sprint oh, through it, you can probably make it. If you close seconds. your eyes and run, you'll hit a wall. Uh, <laughs> but I wouldn't recommend that. Yeah, it goes in and then turns 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 and then runs out. Some people take several minutes. Some people just run through the whole thing holding on to someone else closing their eyes and screaming. It depends who one can do next. The rest of you who don't get a chance to come tonight, have fun, eat candy, try not to get sick. Right. Are you raising your hand? I couldn't. Smithy? How are the rooms blocked off? Isn't there like curtains? Uh, sure, we'll say they're curtains. <laughs> Alright, then Charger Challenge. This officially is our first one coming up on Thursday. The way the Charger Challenge works, it is a competition between the three teams, Globetrotters, Stars, and Heroes. We each get to nominate 15 kids to battle to the death to see which group is the best. And death is a Charger metaphor up. for whichever team is the best. And so that'll be how the Charger Challenge works. And so I have invitations here. I'm getting ready to hand out in a moment. If you are student of the week, you get an automatic invite. If you're student of the month, you get an automatic invite. If you have the most B points in class, you get an automatic invite. And then we throw out a couple just random invites for kids that we want to hopefully get a chance to see do it. If you get the invitation, which I'm going to hand out here right away, uh, I will explain. Let's see. Here are my kids who have invites in this class. It's going to be her. Cloudy. This goes to you. Whenever. You don't have to. You can just look at them and be like, oh my god, they're better than me. Sterner. This goes to you. Steve. This goes to you. And that's all. The others of you who did not get invites, that does not mean you're not doing this first one. What it means is they are the kids who have the first opportunity. The first 24 hours until tomorrow at 4 o'clock is only available to kids who got invites. 
and 20 kids got invites for 15 spots. At 4 o'clock tomorrow, any spots that are not filled opens up to anybody who is interested in doing it. You have to have at least a C- minus in your heroes classes. So that would be Melling, me, and Bus. As long as you have a C- minus in those classes, you are eligible in order to do it. If you got the invite this time and you can't do it, you can hold on to the invite because it is good for all the future ones. And so as long as you hold on to that invite, you can do the next one in January or the one in March or the one that comes up in May. Or you can choose to give it to someone. If you have one of those invitations, you can give your invite to another person and they can use it. But that means you lose your invite and you no longer get a chance to do it. But if you know it's something you don't plan on doing, then you can pick a kid and you can be like, you are the person I choose to represent me in this whole competition thing from there. We also take two alternates, so we'll take 15 and then two other kids in case someone gets sick on that day so we can plug you in. If you are an alternate and you don't get a chance to do it, you are automatically on the list for the second nine weeks, so you are guaranteed a spot in that next group from there. It is Thursday after school and it goes until 5.45. What does it involve? Competition he thinks. So there's a number of events. It's sort of like an Olympics. There's a thing called a hula hoop race, which is kind of hard to explain until you get a chance to actually go and find happen. There's another one that is going to be like a um, puzzle competition. If you're good at things like Wordle, this would be good for you. And there's another one that is going to be a ball race where you have to race with a partner, but you cannot touch the ball and you have to try and race another team. There's another one that involves bouncing a ball and hitting a moving target. Another one that is dodgeball, but you can't move your feet. And then there's another one that is trivia, but the trivia are not school questions. They're questions about like The Office or Rick and Morty or Marvel movies or something like that, or Stranger Things, and we have different categories, and you'll be able to try to answer these random questions. Whichever team has the most points at the end of the trivia competition is the winner. If you are the winning team, you get these limited edition buttons that only 67th graders get per year because we only have 15 people for each nine weeks and you get that limited edition button you get your face on this giant trophy that's back over there behind molly you also get 15 b points sorry 10 b points because you are a winner which makes you better than the other kids and you get your name up in the hallway so that you get a chance to brag forever and ever because these names go back to like 2008 and you become a permanent name in our school which allows you to brag forever and ever and ever. Those of you who got invitations, you cannot sign up until 4 o'clock today after the bell rings at the very end of 7th period because that gives all of my classes an equal chance. And then you can either sign up via email, via Remind, or in person. Home children, you're out of luck because you're dead, so be less dead. Uh -huh. Those of you who are not dead, questions from you guys. <laughs> then, let's get to our stuff for today. Yeah, yeah. Um, outsiders, homework, the character thing. Did you guys have questions as far as that goes? My big thing will be, one, if I don't think I had issues in this class, but I know in my regular classes I had a number of kids who did the homework and got a zero because they didn't follow any of the directions. I don't think I had anyone in this class, but you, if you turned it in, I might recommend actually going and looking at yours to make sure you did not mess it up. I did have some kids who did the weak examples, which is why you got a C on it. So if you look at yours and you got like a 14, 15, or 16, it means that you had a lot of weak examples as opposed to the strong examples, which apparently you are okay with. And so it just means that you did not get as strong of a grade. Smithy. You can, as long as I real quick mean after class. You can't look right now. Good try. Now you have to remember, so you have to like, take a pencil and like carve it into the back of your hand so you don't forget, because it's like Halloween. And -ba Let's talk about stabbing kids. It's time. Yay. I feel the same. Yeah. Let's see, so we did. Let's go back to the yeah. We're going to... I created brand new Brody art for you today. Yeah. Um, I've been doing this book for years, and I was inspired. I was like, I want to do a new Brody art. So, don't applaud yet. You haven't seen the Brody art. But let's see. 
Let's see. So do a quick rewind as we build up for today. We had chapter three, and that's where they were uh, talking about the, the fact that the Beatles were really cool. And then Elvis Presley, who is the see, Beatles are who the Sosa's like. Elvis Presley is who the Greasers like. And then we have. I looked up the ages in the book, so in case you're trying to figure out how old each one was, so you have the brothers at 14, 16, and 20. I don't like Derek. And then you have your friends. Johnny's at 16, and then, so really what it's supposed to be is Soda Pop is his group of friends. It's like Soda Pop and Steve are friends, and then 2-Bit is sort of friends with them, and then you have Dally who just sort of hangs out, and then Johnny who gets pulled in. But like those are the two main friends, and that's younger brother and older brother of Soda, and then like their group of friends, if it looks that like that. And then, who does it turn out is driving the blue Mustang? Bob. Bob. Specifically, and who? Bob. And what did we also find out Bob did? Bob. He jumped, he jumped Johnny. Johnny. What is our evidence? No, yes. the rings. rings on his finger. The rings come in. Oh, by the way, when they were, when Pony Boy was telling the story to Cherry, that's when Cherry realized it. That's when she got all pale when oh. she was talking about the fact that someone with a bunch of rings beat up oh. Johnny. And it says like she got real pale and was like sort of staring at him open mouth. She was just because she realized, scary. oh my God, my boyfriend is a horrible person. Boyfriend's apparently a loose he just term, beat this child. And then and so the boyfriend, boyfriend dies. And then boyfriend oh, dies. Yeah. And then they show up and then everything is fine and they're like, hey, we're gonna give the girls a ride home and then they're getting drunk and they yell at each other. And then Pony Boy and uh, Johnny fall asleep. But where do they fall asleep? In the empty lot. lot. Which apparently is not a good idea. And they fall asleep in the empty lot talking about happy childhood memories. And then Pony Boy, uh, oh yeah, beetle hair. Sorry, I forgot. This was when the Sosa showed up and they talked about having a beetle haircut. Because at the time, really short shaved hair was like the really popular. Don't really have anyone with hair like that in here. Wally and Sterner would be kind of be the closest, but even those are closer to Beetle haircuts. But then you get to like Steve and uh, back to uh, Fishtoe, and so you have the fact that those would be like the Beetle haircut where it's all floppy. That's what they were talking about with the socials with their Beetle haircuts. And they bust the bottle to get ready to do the whole stabby stabby thing. There we go. Slap the oh, they did talk about uh, playing snooker. snooker at one point. Is like, hey, he's gonna go play snooker. I didn't know what snooker was. It's like billiards, but you're not trying to necessarily make it into a pocket. You know, how you guys have played like eight ball when you do the uh, game pigeon thing. Yeah. This is completely snooker is all playing. about math and angles. It's a gambling version where you're trying to just bounce the ball. And it's like all these red ball. I don't know. It's really weird. It's like billiards, but you add in math. All right. And they fell asleep in the empty lot, and then they wake up, and then he goes running home, and apparently Derry gets Derry is upset. So, with the whole Derry being upset thing, how old is Derry? 20. So keep that in mind. How old is Pony Boy? 14. So Pony Boy is full on teenager. Is this considered child abuse? Uh, kind of. He is a minor. Derry is in charge of his two brothers. But he's only 20 years old, and they only get to stay together as long as they don't even get in trouble with the police. If they ever get in trouble with the police, oh. then their family's going to get broken up. Oh. So Derry has that constant worry of, I'm 20, but I have to protect my brothers. Plus, what just happened to Pony Boy he, the day before? He almost got jumped. Almost got jumped by a whole bunch of socias. So imagine you're Derry, and it's Friday night, and your brother has a curfew, and he doesn't show up. So now you're thinking, well, maybe my brother got jumped by a bunch of socias and something bad happened to him. In that case, I should call the police to save my brother. But if I call the police and nothing bad happened to my brother, now I've just called the cops on my own brother and now he's gonna get taken away from me. So Derry's sitting there going, do I call the police to save my brother? Or if I call the police, does that send my brother to a boy's home? I don't know which one I should do. So he's freaking out as a 20-year-old trying to figure out what to do with his younger brother. And then Pony Boy walks in as a 14-year-old. Do -de -do -de -do -de -do, and just walks in the door. And Derry's like, oh my god, I've been freaking out. Where are you? And Pony Boy's like, chill out, old man. What's your issue? And goes full teenager on him. He's like, stop yelling at me. I was just sleeping in the park. What's wrong with you, old boomer? And he starts giving him all these issues. And that's why Derry's like, ah! And 
Smackety. So he doesn't just smack him for the fun of it, but Pony Boy gives a little bit of teenage um, angst. sass and angst. You might not know this, but sometimes teenagers get a little sassy when they respond to adults. I know. You're like, what? And so a lot of adults have experience dealing with that because, you know, we've been parenting. Derry has not been parenting, and all of a sudden, Pony Boy goes full teenager, and Derry does what a lot of adults want to do. <laughs> but most adults hold back and go, no, that would be bad. Derry did it first, and then went, oh, no, that's bad. But by that point, Pony Boy is like, no, nah! and goes running out, and that's where the bad things happen. And then they go running all the way to the park. And when they talk about running to the park, this is the water fountain they're talking about. I mean, not this exact one, but they're talking about a water fountain, not like a blood, blood, blood water fountain, but like a splash, splash, splash water fountain. Yeah, wait, you're getting drowned. Oh, it's... So then you have Pony Boy and Johnny who show up there, and they're running away, and then while they're at the park, who shows up? So the other socials. <laughs> Feels like I nailed it. And so you did. You, now your trick is you have to figure out which one I'm going to make be Bob in just a second. Because you're like, whoa, they all look like such good Bobs. I think but I, I have one of them this. that I thought was the best Bob. And so then the Socias show up. And why are the Socias so grump grump? Because they're drunk. They're drunk. And then so, well, one, they are drunk, which makes us everyone grump grump. But then apparently they were mad because the greasers were hanging out with their girls, and that makes them feel insecure. And they're like, I'm not secure in my manhood, or something like that. And that's when they decide to get all grumpy. And then <coughs> they decide to be nice to Pony Boy. And how do they help out Pony Boy? They give him a drink. Apparently, they are afraid greasers don't know how to wash their hair. And the socials are like, we're entrepreneurs. We're going to start a new business where we just drive around and give people baths. Because apparently, you guys don't know how to do it. And we're going to work off tips. And so they decide to go ahead and start helping out Pony Boy by giving him a bath. And Pony Boy is like a cat and freaks out. He's like, no, water! And goes splash, splash, splash which Johnny freaks out knowing that Pony Boy is part cat and he decides to save him. Pony cat. Over there's Pony Boy. This is Johnny. This is Bob. Oh, nicely done. Bobby. I wanted the guy with no teeth there. to be Bob. Bobby. So here's our issue, of course. At this point, I have Johnny made a comment earlier. And what was Johnny's comment earlier in the book I about? I'm gonna kill the next I'm gonna person. kill now, the next person. Anytime someone, someone the tries to do that to me again, I'm going to kill them. And then all of a sudden, someone tries to do it again. Now the issue is, Bob's over here. The drowning of Pony Boy is over there. You gotta stab Bob. Who does Johnny stab? Bob. Bob. This is where the whole idea of it being self-defense gets a little on the shady side. Yeah. Because Bob's over here next to Johnny, and the drowning's happening over there. It's like me saying, oh no, Cropple is trying to drown Shawls. Shawls, I'll save you. <laughs> stab, stab, stab. Do you feel saved yet? I'll keep going. And you stab the person over there, and you're like, do you feel saved? And you're like, well, no. Well, that becomes part of our issue is, so why does, of all of these people, why does Johnny stab Bob? Because Bob's the one who beat him up. He got oh, drunk. so now it's not self-defense. What it's is revenge. it? It's and vengeance. apparently that's where the law gets a little iffy on things when you go from self-defense to self-revenge. And so that's where it becomes a bit iffy. And then after um, he gives Bob an extra hole, what do the other socials do? Run away. Run away. As okay. you do when the your friend house. has a new hole and you're like, they don't like baths! And so now we have <laughs> um, Bob on the ground. And see, I even added the blood for you to try to And this is going to be Pony Boy. Who's like, ah, ah, who, who is partly drowned. And then, to make things even worse ish, do you remember what the first thing is Johnny says when Pony Boy wakes up? I stabbed him. He admits to the crime. He goes, I stabbed him. I killed him with this knife. I did it. He's dead because of me. I did. So he's like, I am confessing to the crime. Here's where the issue comes in. Up to this point, Pony Boy is innocent. 
He's done nothing but be a cat but getting a bath. Johnny, I'm gonna go run his mouth. He's an and so he's once an Johnny admits the crime to him, he's here's an where Ponyboy has a tough choice. Have to tell the you have to speak up. Once you know of a crime, you become responsible for that crime. Just like if your friend were to say, I've got a giant bag of drugs in my locker, don't tell him. As soon as they tell you, you go, man. Because if you don't tell anyone, you get in the same trouble. So what Pony Boy should do is go, oh man, that sucks to be you. Oh, See you man. later. Sorry, and he should go straight to the cops. But he doesn't. What does he do instead? Runs away to Dally. As soon as he makes the choice to run away with Johnny, now he is considered an accomplice after the fact, and he is considered just as guilty. Now, whether he would go to jail for this or whether you could try to convince someone that it's self-defense, that's where these magical things called lawyers come in and they get to yell at each other for money. But all we know is what actually happened and then you get to try and do the arguing. Bob deserved it. He was just fully <laughs> Just to make him fully come in. Rest in around. pieces, Bob. Just, Rest in pieces. Around. So that was your new probie art for you. Oh, yeah. Johnny does get a little sad because he was like, I did the stabbing and it was sadness. Nah. Um, and then this is where apparently uh, Ponyboy, I think, has the wet jacket or has the wet clothing and Dally's like, I got you, boo. And he gives him the little blue jean jacket. Then how does Dally tell them to leave? Train! And then he's like, hey, get on train. Go to this other town called Wintrixville, and then where are they going to hide? At the top of Mountain. On the top of J Mountain, this old abandoned... Hiccup, stop it, church. Now we'll start reading together where they have woken up and they are at the church. Are they going to finally buy their food? Yes. Oh, buy some food? Oh, food. And there's our church to help creepy you out. Church man. Yeah, I've seen that yeah. Where's the creepy yeah. church man? Why? There's no creepy church man yet. Wait, what? Yet? Is there a creepy church man in your house or garage? We can't, can't stab everybody. All right. Chapter, no, we can't stab everybody. I'm not saying you. Chapter six, or sorry, page 68, chapter five. Got a little excited there, fish toast. Chapter five. I woke up late in the afternoon. For a second, I didn't know where I was. You know how it is when you wake up in a strange place and wonder where in the world you are until memory comes rushing over you like a wave. I have convinced myself that I dreamed everything that had happened the night before. I'm really home in bed, I thought. It's late, and both Derry and Soda Pop are up. Derry's cooking breakfast, and in a minute, he and Soda will come in and drag me out of bed and wrestle me down and tickle me until I think I'll die if they don't stop. It's me and Soda's turn to do the dishes after we eat, and then we'll all go outside and play football. Johnny and Tubit and I will get Derry on our side since Johnny and I are so small and Derry's the best player. It'll go like the usual weekend morning. I tried telling myself that while I lay on the cold rock floor, wrapped up in Dally's jacket and listening to the wind rushing through the trees, dry leaves outside. Finally, I quit pretending and pushed myself up. I was stiff and sore from sleeping on that hard floor, but I'd never slept so soundly. I was still groggy. Pushed off Johnny's jeans jacket, which had somehow gotten thrown across me, and blinked, scratching my head. It was awful quiet, with just the sound of rushing wind in the trees. Suddenly, I realized that Johnny wasn't there. Johnny! I called loudly, and that old wooden church echoed me. Johnny! Johnny! I looked around wildly, almost panic-stricken, but then caught sight of some crooked lettering written in the dust of the floor. Went to get supplies. Be back soon. J.C. The supplies would be food. There you go. Oh, by the way, who's JC? Johnny C. Okay. Making sure, because last year I asked that question and I had a kid say Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I went, What? And he goes, JC, Jesus Christ. I'm like, You think Jesus just showed up? I'm like, they're in a church. And I was like, Well, you are correct, but I don't think this is when Jesus comes back. And he was like, I'm going to go get food. Chilling. And then keeps going from there. So. I was just making sure we were on the same page for that one. I say I died laughing last year. The kid was so serious. I sighed and went to the pump to get a drink. 
the water from it. It was like liquid ice, and it tasted funny, but it was water. And I splashed some on my face, and that woke me up pretty quick. I wiped my face off on Johnny's jacket and sat down on the back steps. The hill the church was on dropped off suddenly about 20 feet from the back door. You could see for miles and miles. It was like sitting on the top of the world. When you haven't got anything to do, you remember things in spite of yourself. I could remember every detail of the whole night, but it had the unreal quality of a dream. It seemed much longer than 24 hours since Johnny and I had met Dally at the corner of Pickett and Sutton. Maybe it was. Maybe Johnny had been gone a whole week and I had just slept. Maybe he had already been worked over by the fuzz and was waiting to get the electric chair since he wouldn't tell where I was. And, and maybe Dally had been killed in a car wreck or something and, and no one would never know where I was and I'd just die up here alone and turn into a skeleton. My overactive imagination was running away with me again. Sweat ran down my face and back, and I was trembling. My head swam, and I leaned back and closed my eyes. I guess it was partly delayed shock. Finally, my stomach calmed down, and I relaxed a little, hoping that Johnny would remember cigarettes. I was scared sitting there by myself. A quick question for you guys. So, from the beginning part of the book, where he was walking home from the movie theater till now, how much time has passed? Like, like two days. Like, like 48 hours. Just about, yeah. So that was Thursday afternoon, evening. He was walking home. So and it's this Sunday is Sunday morning. Saturday morning. Sat Saturday morning. So it is that. So it's from Thursday afternoon to Saturday morning. What's That's that? how much time we've gone through. What? All right. I heard someone coming up through the dead leaves toward the back of the church, and I ducked inside the door. Then I heard a whistle, long and low, ending in a sudden high note. I knew that whistle well enough. It was used by us and the shepherd gang for who's there. I returned it carefully, then darted out the door so fast I fell off the steps and sprawled flat under Johnny's nose. I propped myself up on my elbows and grinned up at him. Hey, Johnny, fancy meeting you here. He looked down at me. I swear, pony boy, you're getting to act more like two bit every day. I tried unsuccessfully, cock an eyebrow. Who's acting? I rolled over and sprang up, happy that someone was there. What'd you get? Come on inside. Dally told us to stay inside. We went in. Johnny dusted off a table with his jacket and started taking things out of the sack and lining them up neatly. A week's supply of bologna, two loaves of bread, a box of matches. I got tired of watching him do it all, so I started digging into the sack myself. <laughs> Whee! I what? Why he says we? Why, <laughs> why is he so drunk? He's so excited. We. <laughs> I see. What was in that water? I don't know. It's really strong water. Three H's for every O. I sat down on a dusty chair and stared. A paperback copy had gone with the wind. How did you know I always wanted one? Johnny reddened. I remembered you saying something about it once, and me and you went to see that movie. Remember? I thought. You could maybe read it out loud and help kill time or something. It's an old book from the 1920s, 1910s, but it's written about the Civil War. And they had a big, huge movie that was about it, too, is that what you're referring to. Wind with the God. Oh, John, I was like, gee, thanks. I put the book down reluctantly. I wanted to start it right then. Peroxide, a deck of cards. Suddenly I realized something. Wait, Johnny. You ain't thinking up. Johnny sat down, pulled out his knife, stabbed me right in the chest. No! I said, oh! oh. Sorry, just kidding. No. For those of the kids who weren't reading along, Johnny sat down and pulled out his knife. We're going to cut our hair. And you're going to bleach yours. He looked at the ground carefully. They'll have our descriptions in the paper. We can't fit them. Oh, no! My hand flew to my hair. No, Johnny, not my hair. It was my pride. It was long was and silky, bad. just like sodas, only a little redder. Our hair was tough. We didn't have to use much grease on it. Our hair labeled as greasers, too. It was our trademark. The bad. one thing we were proud of. Maybe we couldn't have Corvairs or Madras shirts, but we could have hair. Uh, real quick with the hydrogen peroxide. It's the brown bottle that parents would use whenever like, you skin your knee and they'd pour the things on there and it would bubble and you'd scream like that and they're like, I like a woman. And so they'd like, pour it on you. 
So if you're unfamiliar, it has a bleaching type agent in it. So if you put it into your hair and then sit out in the sun, it can lighten your hair color. Not for everyone. If you're a person that goes to the pool in the summertime and it makes your hair lighter from the chlorine and the sun and your hair gets lighter, it'll do the same thing. And so it can take your hair from the darker to the lighter kind of overall look. Same so that's what they're talking about doing is they're going to cut their hair so they don't look like greasers and they're going to use the hydrogen peroxide to make their hair go a lighter color so they can blend in. So there. Let's get away. We'd have to anyway if we got caught. You know the first thing the judge does is make you get a haircut. I don't see why. Dally could just as easily mug somebody with short hair. I don't know either. It's just a way of trying to break us. They can't really do anything to guys like Curly Shepard or Tim. They've had about everything already done to them. And they can't take anything away from them because they don't have anything in the first place. So they cut their hair. I looked at Johnny imploring so Johnny sighed. I'm going to cut mine too and wash the grease out, but I can't bleach it. I'm too dark-skinned to look okay blonde. Oh, come on, pony boy, it'll grow back. Uh, Johnny, at one point earlier, mentioned the fact that he has um, uh, like either Native American or Hispanic blood, so he has a darker complexion. So if he tried to go blonde, he would stand out. But pony boy is a lily white boy, so he's fine. And he can go all blonde and look fine, but Johnny would look a little different. Okay, get it over with. By the way, when was the last time he used his razor blade or his switchblade? When he killed, killed the guy. guy. Just keep that in mind that this is the one they're getting ready to use Does to kill the hair. Blood on it? I don't know. Maybe. Johnny flipped out the razor edge of his switch, took hold of my hair, and started sawing on it. I shuddered. Not too short. Johnny, please. Finally, it was over with, and my hair looked funny, scattered over the floor in tufts. It's lighter than I thought it was. Can I see what I look like now? No, we got to bleach it first. After I'd sat in the sun for 15 minutes to dry the bleach, Johnny let me look in the old cracked mirror we found in the closet. I did a double take. My hair was even lighter than soda pops. I never combed it to the side like that. I mean, it just didn't look like me. It made me look younger and scared her too. Boy, howdy, I thought. This really makes me look tough. I looked like a blasted pansy. I was miserable. Johnny handed me the knife. He looked scared, too. Cut the front, thin out the rest. I'll comb it back after I wash it. Johnny, you can't wash your hair in that freezing water in this weather. You'll get a cold. He only shrugged. Go ahead and cut it. And I did the best I could. He went ahead and washed it anyway, using the bar of soap he'd bought. I was glad I'd had to run away with him instead of Two-Bit or Steve or Dally. I mean, that'd be one thing they'd never think of. Soap. I gave him Dally's jacket to wrap up in, and he sat shivering in the sunlight on the back steps, leaning against the door, combing his hair back. It was the first time I could see that he had eyebrows. He didn't look like Johnny. His forehead was whiter where his bangs had been. I mean, it would have been funny if we hadn't been so scared. He was still shivering with cold. I guess... I guess we're disguised. I leaned back next to him sullenly. I guess so. Oh, shoot. It's just hair. Shoot nothing. It took me a long time to get that hair just the way I wanted it. And besides, this just ain't us. It's like being in a Halloween costume we can't get out of. Well, we gotta get used to it. We're in big trouble and it's our looks are us. I started eating a candy bar. I'm still tired. To my surprise, the ground blurred, and I felt tears running down my cheeks. But I brushed them off hurriedly. Johnny looked as miserable as I felt. I'm sorry I cut your hair off, pony boy. Oh, it ain't that, I said between bites of chocolate. All right, I mean not all of it. I'm just a little spooky. I really don't know what's the matter. I'm just, I'm mixed up. I know, Johnny said through chattering teeth as we went inside. Things have been happening so fast. I put my arms across his shoulders to warm him up. Two bits should have been in that little one-horse store. Man, we are in the middle of nowhere. The nearest house is two miles away. Things are just laying out wide open, just waiting for somebody slick like Two Bit to come and pick him up. He could have walked out with half the store. He leaned back beside me, 
I could feel him trembling. Good old two-bit. He must have been as homesick as I was. Remember, remember how he was wisecracking last night? Last night. I mean, just last night, we were walking Cherry and Marsha over to Two-Bits. Just last night, we were laying in the lot, looking up at the stars, dreaming... Stop stars. it! Johnny gasped between the clenched teeth. Shut up about last night! I killed a kid last night! He couldn't have been 17 or 18 and I killed him! How'd you like to live with that? He was crying. I held him like soda had held him the day we found him lying in the lot. And there we stopped reading because that's a boy that's crying. Back. Yeah, for the bell. Tomorrow we will get from there and hopefully get to the next big scary scene that's going to happen. What? Home children, just come back to life. We, we miss you. Stop being dead. Hey. And maybe if you eat lots of candy tonight, it'll bring you back to life. Yeah, totally. Or if you come to a certain creepy old man's garage and see what happens. That's so bad. <laughs>